Alright guys, this is Will from Monkey Steals Peach here, and for today's video I want to address the common misconception that Mantis Kung Fu is imitating an insect, rocking your body and poking your fingers or trying to catch bugs. And I want to contrast this against what Mantis Kung Fu really is. So if you watch movies or video games or any other sort of media, you'll see that Mantis Kung Fu is often portrayed, as I've just said, um, where you're crouching the body very low to the ground, rocking the body around, poking the fingers and essentially mimicking something trying to catch bugs. So this whole portrayal of Mantis really stems back to the 1980s Jet Li movie Shaolin Temple. And in that movie, uh, a man by the name of Yu Hai played the abbot and in the movie he was doing the modern wushu version of Mantis which he himself actually created. And this was so iconic that it kind of um, created this image in people's minds of what Mantis is and then it kind of spread out from there. And so this wushu Mantis has become very popular in China um, the sports universities around the country are teaching it as part of the modern wushu curriculum. Um, it's being practiced and performed regularly at the Shaolin Temple. Um, it, I've even seen it been adopted at Wudang Mountains with Taoist monks um, performing it. And so this kind of misconception is constantly um, just kind of growing and growing. And the thing is, I think it's fair enough if the performance aspect is what interests you, but the people that are practicing this and even more so teaching it to other people should be open um, and honest about what it is that they're doing um, for the sake of their student. The students have the right to know what it is they're actually learning and a distinction does need to be made that this is a performance wushu mantis, this is not traditional mantis. So to give you a little bit of history, um, this modern wushu mantis was created by Yuhai. Um, Yuhai was a native of Yantai City, which is the home of mantis kung fu, and he is a very accomplished practitioner of traditional seven star mantis. In fact, he learnt from Lin Jingshan, um, who was one of the top masters in the area in the early 20th century, and he's actually the, I think it's the cousin, at least he's a relative of the two famous brothers, Yu Tian Lu and Yu Tian Chung, who were two of the most influential seven star mantis teachers in sort of the period from the 1980s to 2000s in Yantai. And so what Yu Hai did was he took this strong foundation that he had in this traditional mantis but he applied the modern wushu aesthetic to his movements. He created this new form which he felt expressed the, the ideas and the spirit of Mantis. And what's interesting is that when you look at Yu Hai's movements doing this wushu Mantis, you can still see the elements of the traditional Mantis within that. You can see that he's still adhering to the principles and um, rules of the system, his body still has full connection and uh, full body power, his footwork is very accurate, but he's just kind of taken the path of making it more aesthetically pleasing and more expressive rather than being about functionality. Now the issue really is that as he's taught this to people, and they've taught it to other people, and it's gone through several generations, it's now completely lost that original essence that Yu Hai had. And when you look at the people doing it, particularly if you see the, the Shaolin monks performing it at the temple, it no longer has any of those elements of traditional mantis. And as the practitioners are uh, unaware of the origins and the principles of the style, they don't really know what they're trying to express, they're just trying to mimic the outer appearance of what they saw their teacher or, or Yu Hai or whoever doing. And so it's, it's kind of strayed so far away. And this is actually something, if you listen to my podcast interview with Byron Jacobs, 
this is something that's uh, a big issue within the modern wushu community as a whole that as it's strayed further and further away from the traditional arts it, it's completely lost its essence now. Now one other interesting point to mention here is that a lot of traditional practitioners in Shandong province are now being influenced by the modern wushu so it's kind of come full circle and you'll often see if you go to forms competitions in Yantai or Qingdao or even you know other parts of China you'll see people doing the traditional forms but they've added in these very low stances, they've added in these rocking and shaking movements, and they've sort of jazzed it up. They're still practicing the traditional mantis, but they've kind of sacrificed the functionality of the movements for the aesthetic value that the modern wushu uh, mantis has provided for them. So it's kind of interesting to see how it's come full circle here. Of course, at the same time, there are many purists who are practicing the arts as were taught to them from the masters of the previous generations and they're fully rejecting any influence from modern wushu. So contrary to this popular perception of mantis which is the uh, wushu or performance based mantis, the traditional art is not about the imitation of an insect it's not about rocking the body, and it's not about poking the opponent's pressure points. The idea of mantis is taken from the concept Tanglang Bu Chan, which means the mantis catches a cicada. And so this is a principle and strategy for fighting. This is not a, this is not a superficial um, imitation. And so what this means is, when you look at how a mantis catches its prey, it fires out its, it, it throws out its claws, it latches hold of the prey, it pulls it in and then it devours it. So when we're engaging with an opponent, this is the main principle that we're applying for how to defeat them in a short time. As the opponent comes to us, or if we move to them, we're latching on, we're using the principle of sticking and adhering, so jian and nian in Chinese. We're latching onto their limbs and then we're not letting go. We're moving in close, we're getting into that clinching or grappling range, but we're not engaging them in prolonged um, grappling type situations. What we're trying to do is move into that range close, smother the opponent so they have no, no space to maneuver, and then finish them off as fast as we can with a combination of multiple strikes, um, short range elbows, shoulders, knees, and then finally ending with the takedown and finishing them off. And so really this idea of the mantis is just teaching us how to end a fight as quickly as possible. It's giving us a tried and tested method for finishing, finishing the fight cleanly and quickly. Okay, so hopefully you found that insightful and it cleared up some of the misconceptions about what mantis kung fu is as well as explained the background and history behind why we have this modern wushu mantis, why it's so prevalent, and what exactly it is that you're seeing when you see the Shaolin monks or the wushu teams performing these fantastical forms. And again, it's not to say that there's anything wrong with the modern wushu, it's just it should be labelled what it is, and it, people that are practising that and demonstrating that, teaching it, should be clear about what they're doing and make a distinction between that and the traditional mantis. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, um, please subscribe to my channel. You can grab a t-shirt uh, in the merch shelf below, or you can go to monkeystealspeach.com slash shop. Um, you could also consider joining YouTube as a member, or you could go to patreon.com slash monkeystealspeach and on both of those there's lots and lots of extra content. If you're a little bit more nerdy and you want to go a bit deeper, there's some more kind of niche talks on there. And there's also uh, extra footage from my interviews and trips in China that haven't been shown publicly. So yeah, I highly encourage you to go and check that out. And as always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.